And on this video, we're going to be taking a look at the updated Wolfbox G840H. Now, the G840H has actually been around for quite a bit some time, and Wolfbox has made some significant changes to it, primarily with the biggest benefit being the addition on Wi-Fi support. So now you can access this dash cam via an app on your phone. You also get that front and rear camera, parking monitoring, and parking assistance, and more. And on this video, I'm going to show you all of its features as well as what you get inside of this box. That way you can decide if this is the right dash cam for you. And as always, I have placed a link in the description down below to this dash cam in case you want to get one for yourself. And the GA40H measures roughly about 12 inches, which is an important measurement you want to take into consideration if you're planning to still use your visors and fold them all the way out. And the GA40 features a single button on the bottom and several inputs on the top. First, we have USB-C for power, then the input for the rear camera and the memory card slot. Now, they have already included a memory card of 32GB in size, but this can potentially be upgraded as large as 256GB. And finally, the input for the GPS antenna. And the front camera view angle is adjustable. And to mount it, they have included silicone straps that allows us to place the dash cam directly on top of our original mirror. Then one of the straps is going to be applied on one side and the other strap is going to be applied on the other side. Now, normally this is done on the vehicle. There's no need to remove the original mirror. I just did that to show you what it will look like. And as you can see, this effectively hides the original mirror behind the new LCD dash cam. And if your original mirror is a little bit larger, they have included a set of longer straps to accommodate that as well. The rear camera is all metal and is waterproof, so it could be mounted outside of the vehicle or inside of the vehicle, and that could be done with the high-strength double-sided tape that I have included that gets placed right here. I can peel this back and then attach this to my car. They have also included this optional mounting bracket that allows the rear camera to be tilted up or down as needed and also allows the rear camera to be mounted against a vertical surface. Also included is the rear camera extension cable with an approximate length of about 20 feet and this red wire can be used to enable parking assist which are the reversing guidelines which I'll show you in a little bit. And here's the included power adapter with a right angle USB-C port and also an additional USB port on the back that way we can power the dash cam and another device of our choice. We also get the GPS antenna which is installed on the inside of the vehicle. There's double sided tape which I can peel and then attaches to my car. And now let's move over to the vehicle so I can show you the rest of its features. And we'll begin with the startup test. Normally the dash cam is gonna turn on automatically every time we turn on the vehicle. I turned it on manually so we can see how long it takes before it starts up. And as you can see, we are presented with the rear view of the vehicle. We have day and time information on this side. And we also have this compass and miles per hour indicator over here. The view is also adjustable by swiping up and down on the screen. This is again the rear view of the vehicle. And if I swipe in this direction, now we have switched over to the front camera. Again, oh, I'm able to adjust that view, how I want that display on this dash cam. And swiping one more time gives us both the front view and the rear view and swiping one more time returns us back to the rear view and now let's test out the parking assist function if i put the car on reverse you'll notice that the view actually moved a little bit and we got reversing guidelines and we also have this little icon on this side tapping this icon zooms out the image so we are presented with the entire view of the rear vehicle however you want to choose either between this view the close-up view or the zoomed out view because the reverse guidelines are adjustable which i'll show you in a little bit and you want to adjust them for the view that you prefer uh, this is not the view that i normally use for backing up this is the view that i normally use for backing up so i have adjusted my reverse guidelines so they better fit this view and notice when i put the car back into d the dash cam comes out of that reverse parking mode and returns back to its prior view and also tapping on the screen brings up a menu in the bottom You'll notice that we are recording by this red blinking dot. However, with this icon, I can stop the recording and tapping this icon one more time resumes recording again. And the second icon allows us to take a picture. 
The third icon allows us to flag the section of the video that we're currently looking at as important so we can find it a lot easier among the many hours that this dashcam can potentially record. Notice how this has turned from red to yellow indicating we have flagged this video. And the next icon which looks like a microphone allows us to turn off audio recording. That way it only records video. And tapping this icon one more time re-enables audio recording. And the next icon is brightness adjustment and here we can decrease the brightness with the minus icon or we can increase the brightness with this plus icon. We also have this icon with arrows and this all it does is switches the views for us. So instead of swiping on the screen, we can just switch views by tapping this icon. Moving over to playing back the videos, I'm gonna stop the current recording and notice that we have a playback icon that is now accessible. And the playback menu is divided into four sections, normal video, video potentially involving a car crash, pictures that we might have taken, and also this icon that allows us to switch views between the front recordings and the rear camera recordings. But let me show you what playing back a video looks like. I'm gonna hit that play icon. And if you wanna enlarge it, you can actually do that with this icon right here. You can also choose to delete that with the trash can icon or go back to the playback menu. Moving over to the settings of the dash cam. Again, I'm gonna stop the current recording. I'm gonna tap that gear icon. The very first setting is gonna be resolution where we can have the front camera 2.5K and the rear at 1080p or we can lower both to 1080p for front and rear in case we wanted to fit more on our memory card. We can also turn on or off the Wi-Fi in case we wanted to access the dash cam with the app and I'll show you that in a little bit. And we can also adjust the reversing lines. Now this particular dash cam supports complete adjustment of the parking guidelines. So instead of having presets, you can actually move these lines to whichever position that you want, which is gonna be convenient so you can adjust them and tweak them so they work for your vehicle. There's also customization for how the rear view is displayed and also several languages that you can choose from in case you wanted to change it from the default language. There's also a screensaver option that automatically will turn off the screen after a certain period of time, but the dash cam keeps recording. And for parking mode, the dash cam does require the optional hardwire kit. And if it is hardwired, we can enable parking mode in time-lapse duration of up to 12 hours or up to 24 hours of parking monitoring. The G sensor is also adjustable. That way the dash cam can detect when you get into a car crash and you have several levels between low, middle, or high, or turning it off altogether. Moving over to the second page of settings, there's quite a bit of customization here, including time adjustment, because this dash cam is getting the time from the GPS, but if you live in a state that observes daylight savings time, you can add or decrease an hour in here by turning this function on or off. Speed unit is also customizable between miles per hour and kilometers per hour, and also the ability to tweak the GPS so it matches the speedometer on your vehicle. There's also an overspeeding reminder, and here you can tell the dash cam at what point should it alert you that you are speeding. But now let's move over to the app so I can show you the rest of its features. And the Wolfox app is available for Apple and Android devices, and it allows us to connect to the dash cam using this Wi-Fi function. As you can see, we are shown a live view from the front of the vehicle, and we are also able to maximize that view if we wanted to see it on a larger screen. Additionally, we have this icon right here and tapping that icon switches over to the rear view. The rear view can also be maximized if we wanted to see that on a larger screen. And also we have this icon right here that allows us to flip the rear view for some reason if you wanted to do that. And we also have a microphone icon right here if we wanted to temporarily turn off the microphone or re-enable the microphone again. We can also control the dash cam. We can stop the recording with this icon right here. Notice it says recording pause. And we can resume recording again by tapping this icon one more time. We also have this camera icon that allows us to take a picture. Next up is video playback, which is done with this icon on the lower left-hand corner. 
Now what you'll find is that the videos have been sorted out into three different folders. The very first folder called loop. This is just normal video of us potentially just driving around. Maybe nothing exciting happened there. The second folder is snapshot is any pictures that we might have taken with the dash cam. And the third folder is the locked folder. This is potential videos showing a car crash. But also notice that there is a letter on each video, F or R. F means it's video of the front camera. R means that it is video from the rear camera. Well, let's play back a video from the dash cam. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that and we'll wait for that to load. Now, currently we are streaming the video from the dash cam. So you can see that there's some buffering going on. And if you don't want to have that slowdown or that buffering, you can download the video to your phone and then it'll play smoothly. Additionally, downloading it to your phone saves the video from the dash cam to your phone, which is what most people are going to want to do. You can also take a screenshot or choose to delete the current video that you're looking at. And if you wanted to delete multiple videos, you can hit the select icon and then tap on the videos that you don't want, hit delete and delete those. Same thing if you wanted to download multiple videos, I can just use the select icon, select the videos that I want to download and then download them at the same time. And to change the settings of the dash cam, we have this little gear icon. And these are the same settings that I explained earlier. So now let's go take a look at some driving video, including the audio test. And this is an audio test of the Wolfbox GA40H equipped with Wi-Fi and I am sitting on the driver's side seat. And this is an audio test of the Wolfbox GA40H equipped with Wi-Fi and I'm standing outside the driver's side door. But in addition to adding Wi-Fi, Wolfbox has also made several changes to the GA40H, including changing over from a lithium battery to a supercapacitor. Now, on a lithium battery dash cam, you typically have the ability to have parking monitoring without hard wire. 
somewhat limited capacity, but it is there. However, lithium batteries tend to degrade over time and sometimes they can even catastrophically fail as it happened in a couple of my dash cams where the battery literally fell and busted the dash cam apart. So because of that, I do prefer a capacitor over a battery, even though now I am required to hardwire the dash cam if I wanna have parking monitoring. So I think it was a good move to go to a super capacitor. Additionally, we also saw Wolfbox move away from the mini USB connector to a USB connector for power. Now, the mini USB connector is found on many dash cams and it's actually still found in many new products that are coming out in the market. So it is definitely not an obsolete connector. And for the most part, it is quite reliable. What's interesting is that I had a dash cam fail for a bad mini USB connector prematurely. It should have lasted a lot longer. So I think going away from the mini USB connector to a more robust USB-C connector makes sense. So remember, I put a link in the description down below to this dash cam in case you wanna get one for yourself. And if you have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.